Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. It's finally the weekend. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Winner Home on Afternoon Express, brought to you by Private Property on this glorious Friday afternoon. My name is Danilo Acquisto. And as you know by now, on Friday's Afternoon Express hosts SA's premier interior design reality competition, where we follow three design duos as they decorate three cluster homes at the Stone Quarter Development at the Eye of Africa Estate in Johannesburg. Now, in the finale of the competition, one lucky viewer will win their choice of one of these completed homes. And if you enter it could be you. We are now exactly halfway through the transformation of these houses from empty spaces into these lavish homes. And last week, the design duos learned which room was next on the to-do list. So let's have a quick look back to get you up to speed. Previously on Win at Home, the design duos had to wipe the slate clean for a new challenge. You'll be decorating and designing the master bedroom. To get some design and product inspiration, the duos paid a visit to Design Expos in Joburg and got some much needed motivation from the fans. It's good to feel appreciated for your work. Mm. Mm. What you see on the TV is what you get in person. They are fabulous. As for the design process, there were some concerns at the halfway mark. We're not sure if we're going to keep it or take it out. I'm a bit worried about the paint being done on time because usually at this point we way past the painting phase. And yet one quirky duo still found time for a little silliness. But it can't all be fun and games. Will these master bedrooms be the stuff of sweet dreams or a nightmare to finish? The design duos are competing for the judges' approval and to win 100,000 Rand as the best designers. But if you vote for your fan favorites, they could win an additional 20,000 Rand. Now, if they get both the judges' vote and yours at home, they walk away with the full 120,000 Rand. So there's a lot at stake for the design duos, and we can only hope that the stress doesn't get the better of them on the final day of the Master Bedroom Challenge. It's the final day, and our carpet is in. Our bed has been delivered, we have to assemble it. We're quite worried about it. The bed had to be assembled in the bedroom. It's quite a heavy bed. You can't assemble it in another room and carry it into the bedroom. Tsapo, this is what we received from Nicholas. What are your thoughts? It's very small. That's what I think. And heavy. <laughs> I expected something bigger, something that was going to fill up like the entire, you know, top of the bed. But I feel like it's too small. I don't see it working. And luckily, I got to call Heidi at the very last hour. Is it Heidi Fari? Yes, Heidi Fari. And Hi luckily, she said she has old work that she did for her past exhibitions, and she thought this could oh, work this for lovely. us. This is lovely. I love this. This is beautiful. So she was actually happy to show us a variety of her old works that we could select from, and she was very pleased to give us something. This is lovely. I think it will work better, and it picks colors from almost everything we have in the room. I love it. Hi, right, back to work. <laughs> While Team House and Leisure chooses artwork, Team VC still has paintwork being done in their master bedroom. We've got most of our things together, mm -hmm. but we still have a few details that we really want to get right. I'm still not sure about the wallpaper. It's amazing, but yeah. I just it's an wanna, ongoing battle. I feel like I should just paint the wall, but I can't. That wallpaper looks nice, but I'm not too sure if it's right for the bedroom. I think we should keep it. We are using Caesar Stone in our bedroom as a server slash console. Mm. And in this space, I think it's actually quite a good investment. It's very good. Because it's 100% made of Caesar Stone. Mm -hmm. It's actually an amazing product that we have. The scissor stone almost gave me a heart attack when it refused to enter there. It's quite heavy, and I'm proud that the guys put it in quite well. But here's the thing. It nearly gave me a heart attack. <laughs> Our curtains have been made. 
Custom made. Custom made. By one of our girls. We bought a rail as well. Yes. The rail's too long for the curtains. So. Or the curtains became shorter in projection than the rail. Because yes. we bought the rail so that they could get the actual measurement of how long it's supposed to be. Something short, something's long, and we need to make them fit. The pole's bigger than the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to sort this out. So it's either we unpick those goblets and make it long. Yes, baby, if you unpick those goblets, it will work. So are you going to unpick the curtain? If I have to. Or are you going to chop up that pole? <laughs> That's my butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> You're full of jokes, but at the wrong time to become oh, a weakness joke. I think we should bring this in. And then the pole. We've at least got And then the pole. The problem is the pole, babe. It's not anything else. It's the pole. The pole is longer than the curtain. So you either make the curtains longer or you... Shut the front door. <laughs> okay, but we can't make the curtains longer. You can. If you unpick those goblets, it expands. Those goblets, it's taking in all that fabric to gather it. So it's either you do that or you cut that rail. It's actually that simple. Cut it. Let's cut what? Yeah, the rail. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let's... you've got five minutes <laughs> and you're stepping on my nerves. Get me James. <laughs> he always says this last minute. That's the way to do it. <laughs> the best idea has come at the 11th hour. Just the implementation might not <laughs> arrive with it. There's a fine line between perfection and clumsy. And, and where was I? I was walking on that tight road between the clumsy <laughs> and fine line. <laughs> We decided to paint the table because we already had the dresser and the side table and they looked the same. So just to like make them look different. The idea was to break the like that similarity between the two of them and have them like two different pieces. And also just to take it away from being a retail piece and into a more personal piece. Well, we've used the moth mist colour which is a beautiful French khaki mm. sort of colour. It blends in with, with the vanilla no. If you look at the grains of the scissor stone vanilla no, it picks it up a little bit in there. So we've used it in our bathroom and we're continuing it in our master bedroom. And we're putting it absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Ceilings, corners, walls. Except the furniture, like <laughs> the first challenge. We, we should have. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're going to get this king size bed into the bedroom. We hope it fits. <laughs> yes. So we've got our vassal men here and they're going to help us get it in. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> yes! 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 It's going in! <laughs> Fabulously, yeah. we feel amazing. We didn't think a king size would fit into the doorway. But so it's, it's a big relief. Absolutely. Hallelujah. <laughs> now we can lay the oh, bed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> we chose scissor stone for a self-help side table because it's water and dust resistant and it's perfect that you now don't need placements on your table. It's a real tongue twister because you have to say self-help side table and remember all that. There's so many S's. I think that's <laughs> why tongues get so tight. Self-help side, side table. table. Self-help self, self help <laughs> 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 If you like what you see so far, remember that one of these homes could be yours. To enter the Winner Home Grand Prize competition, visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for the design duo you like best. You could help them win that 20,000 Rand prize as fan favorite, and at the same time, you could win your choice of one of the decorated homes with luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, as well as premier home appliances by Grundig. At a value of over 3 million Rand, it's no wonder this is the biggest prize on South African television. Now remember that entering the competition also automatically puts you in the running to win our latest bi-weekly prize, which currently is a Sealy Posturepedic queen size base and mattress set worth 14999 So visit Private Property now and get your entries in. After the break, the first master bedroom is revealed, so get the popcorn ready.
in proud partnership with Winner Home. The best stone is Caesar Stone. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Got your popcorn and your yogurt? Well, good, because this is Winner Home on Afternoon Express, and our design viewers are currently busy with their master bedrooms. Share your thoughts with us on social media using hashtag Winner Home. We'd love to hear from you. Now, being quite curious to see how things were coming along, I thought I'd quickly pay them a visit as they finished up the challenge. With that all-important 5 p.m. deadline fast approaching for the master bedroom, I'm expecting some exquisite design. Except, this time, I'm not even allowed inside. That's right! Stay out! <laughs> Fine, but you guys can take a sneak peek. Come take a look. Well, now you can see why we told Danila to shut the front door and stay on the outside. We've Ooh. never got much more to go. Yeah, the Caesar Stone guys are magicians. They're going to be done in like two tic tac turn. They'll be done. And then we need to be done in tic tac turn <laughs> to make that bed. Yeah. And then get out of here before we get cut out. <laughs> <laughs> then look, it was not personal. We love you, girl. But it was, no, no, shut the front door, shut the side doors. We need to finish up as quick as we can so that when you do come in, it's, yeah. So Team House and Leisure made their paint change, had lots of installations still to do, and were feeling very nervous about finishing on time. That 5 p.m. deadline is fast approaching. Take a look. No, 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 Daniela, you can't come in. Our white carpet is in. <laughs> the reason why Daniela can't come in here is, just, is because we just cleaned our carpet and we are rolling now. And we're just short of putting our art check at the top and also okay. drilling. The, the mirrors and accessorizing the sides as well, but then otherwise everything is looking good. We're quite happy. An explosion of colour is the only way I know how to describe Team VC's master bedroom. And with all of those big decisions finally made, all that's left for them to do is polish up. We hope. Let's take a look. And they've locked me out. Danilo is not allowed into our house. We don't want to hear anything of anything. Yeah, like, we don't know. No ticking bomb. Like, we just... It, we need it to must work now. must just outside, <laughs> not in our bedroom. We need to work, so Danilo must just wait yeah. five minutes. <sighs> Bo, I think the mirrors need to go here. Like, look how beautiful this will look. And they add something, you know, to the room, especially on this side. What do you think? I get your point. But I, I think maybe we should maybe look uh, at this round mirror, it looks lonely when it's looking like this. Maybe it should have like two small mirrors or three. No, this is not a mom's room. There's no babysitting that needs to happen. But Let's put them here. Here, look, beautiful. Okay, we're gonna have them there. The final few minutes are for the finishing touches, where the duos make sure the space is styled and ready to wow the judges. Shortly before the design contestants were due to complete their master bedrooms, they didn't even want to let me inside their homes. So it gives me great pleasure to announce that it's five o'clock and they should be done right about now. We have run out of time <laughs> and we're running out of our unit. <laughs> and we are happy that we finished. Everything is spot on. So yeah, we are not quite worried about anything now. We just looking forward to share that the result. we get the extra money. Ending the challenge with a smile is always a good sign, especially where budgets are concerned. Besides sponsored products and services to the value of over 350,000 Rand per design duo, they were also each allocated a 300,000 Rand cash budget for the entire house, which allows them to apportion this as they see fit. Now, Team Habitat had already spent a sizable 161,000 Rand of their 300,000 Rand cash budget so far, the most of the three teams, and therefore allocated a very modest 25,000 Rand for the master bedroom. With their bathroom win, they ended up with 28,000 Rand to spend and did pretty much exactly that. This cost-conscious allocation means that they still have 114,000 Rand left for the kitchen, 
garden and the living room. Team VC had spent 148,000 Rand before tackling the master bedroom and therefore decided to apportion 50,000 Rand to this room. In the end, they spent 48,000 Rand on the room, saving two. So the amount left in their overall budget is 104,000 Rand. Team House and Leisure had been the most modest with their budget allocations of the first three room challenges and winning the two consecutive challenges provided them with a cash injection. So they splashed out by budgeting 57,000 Rand on their master suite. However, a miscalculation with their hefty contractor bill for the big bathroom remodel and other overspending, plus going over the master bedroom budget by an extra 8,500 Rand, meant that they are left with only 85,000 Rand for the kitchen, garden and living room. Goodness you two, Tepo and Manela, how on earth are you going to get out of the situation? The design duos still have three more spaces to decorate, including the kitchen, which is the most expensive space in the home. They'll have to work very carefully with their money, one team in particular, or there could be some sleepless nights ahead. Now, winning the master bedroom challenge will definitely boost one design duo's budget, but before the judges come along to survey the designs with their bedroom eyes, let's enjoy the first of these beautiful spaces as Team House and Leisure reveal their completed sanctuary. Soft, restful and peaceful retreat were the words that inspired Team House and Leisure's master bedroom, which is a continuation of their modern minimalist approach. Whoa! You can just feel the luxury as you walk into the space, so much so I've had to take my shoes off just to feel it beneath my feet. You two, well done, this feels like I'm in a marshmallow. Thank you so much, Danilo. We are happy that's what you think because that's exactly what we were trying to achieve. Seeing as I feel like I'm sitting on a cloud, I want to know what the dreams were that you had for this room and the things that you loved the most. Starting with the finishes, we tried to bring in the same carpet we have in our spare room into the main bedroom, which is a Belgotex Vogue Poom, very luxurious underfoot and soft. And then we changed the wall colour since the judges didn't like it the first time around. Actually, I'm pretty glad that they didn't like it because this turned out much better and warmer. And then we have curtains to match that, like the wall colour. We tried to improve from what we had in our first bedroom. Which were heavily criticised on because they didn't like the quality. And, and the this, length as well. As well, yes. So this time around we got it right that it just drapes but not too much. And also with the wall colour, we had to complement the curtain as well. Now a little birdie told me that a couple of bespoke pieces were thrown into your room. What are they? What I have on my side, it is a side table that we bought off the shelf and a lamp that were like separate and then we tried to fuse, like make them one thing just to complement what Vanille has on his side. And then with our dresser, we decided to change the color of the top and painted it in a Plascon velvet glow. We last criticized about plants in the space, so we decided to just tone it down this time around and only have a cut of an orchid. And also because we have plants here, we didn't include any feather. The plants were also an issue because of privacy and you guys haven't solved that issue either. That is true. So our initial plan for the space was actually to break the, the wall so that you could read the whole room as one. And with the plants, it became the fence that gives you the space from the other side. But also, I think it's a contemporary way of looking at spaces and how people interact. And another reason why we left out the screen is that we wanted like the judge to have like a second look at the space with the two together and then if they still don't like it, we'll really look into like solving that privacy problem. Let me have my Oprah moment quickly because I, I want to know how you guys are feeling honestly about going into this challenge. You took some advice, some of the other advice you just quite out the window. We're quite confident about how the space turned out and we, like, we're really happy with that. But then the only thing that might be a little bit of a concern is the fact that we, like, we ignored the whole privacy thing, which we didn't really ignore, but then it was for them to like, have a view of the two spaces. I'm actually more relieved after we lost the last challenge because then there was too much pressure on winning. So this time around, we just cut back on the stress of winning and also just on the accessories, like we had three shelves, but we're like, no, let's have two. So all the time we're just cutting back, like not too much, but keeping it simple and minimal. As we continue to reveal the completed bedrooms, please share your thoughts and comments using hashtag WinnerHome and you can enjoy behind the scenes photos and moments by following WinnerHome on social media. Now after the break, Team VC and Team Habitat reveal their master bedrooms. Don't go anywhere.
Gründig. For a good reason. Welcome back. This is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now, everybody loves a comfortable, sexy, and luxurious master bedroom. However, designing this all-important space isn't a bed of roses. Team VC had their fair share of uncertainty and indecision, so did they finally put their worries to rest and create a dream master bedroom? Let's see. Designing for a fictional client who is young and creative, Team VC endeavoured to create a master bedroom that is chic and sophisticated with a high contrast colour palette. Wow, 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 guys. This is a master bedroom I could call home. Amazing. Good job. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, thanks, Danilo. All right, so some big decisions had to be made. I see the wallpaper stayed. I see there's a new carpet. Talk us through what happened at between the halfway mark and now. We decided that we had made a bit too many amazing choices. So we decided to tone it down and we got a beautiful new rug um, so that our focal point can be then the wallpaper and obviously our lovely curtains. What about your fictional character that will live in this space? Because remember, somebody's going to have to move in here. We imagined a young guy who's quite passionate about Africa and who likes to travel. So in this space, we tried as much as we can to do it not a European style, but a little bit of African feel so that we can create our own African design style. So being the team that hasn't yet won a challenge, the judges are going to really want to know how much effort you've put into the advice they've given you from the previous challenges. And that advice had to do with the balance of your spaces. How have you managed to balance this room? What we had, which we used to our advantage, was this beautiful big round mirror. Um, we also tried to balance it out with smaller elements to make up the large elements. Like those round, small mirrors. If you look at the pendant and also the bedside lamp, they look the same, but they're not from the same shop. So in that kind of a thing, they have the same volume. They, that's how we balanced it quite well. And the four poster bed, it doesn't look too big in the room. It's actually nice accommodated. Looking at our server there, made from Caesar stone, it's actually also nice with three different types of Caesar stone. Like we used our vanilla, no, we used the, what is it? Oh, rugged, yeah, and rugged concrete as well. Each judge has a different personality, so what do you think that they're going to love about this space? I think the judges are going to love that our room doesn't look like a catalogue anymore, and that we're also going to love the balancing of it, how we used the orange curtains, the softness of the room, also the paint from floor, the skating to the ceiling. So everything in here is quite nice. Well, Katleko, being a female, I would say she'd love our bed. Um, I know as a female that I love to melt into a big, beautiful, luxurious bed and just melt away into a cloud of sleep. I also think that Donald would like our collaboration pieces because it has an African yet contemporary feel and it's not necessarily his style but I do think he'll appreciate it. I'm so in love with your master bedroom but it's always going to be about the details. And one detail I noticed had to do with light. You mentioned that it's going to be quite dark with these curtains in here and all your other lights become very handy, except for one. So I spotted that this was off if you try to turn it on, nothing happens. And then I discover, what's going on here? Well, the plug point is on top, but... Uh, in there? Yeah, in there. So you'd have to shove this underneath up the top and then have this cable popping up? No, the aim is to put it down there, but because of it's expensive to do that, so we can't afford it. Yeah, hmm. at the moment, we can't afford to put in a plug mm. point there. It's honestly minor. I don't think the judges will even spot it. The space is looking amazing. The balance is incredible. I want to call this place home. Well done, you two. From Team VC's contemporary expression of African design, it's onto a space that wants to literally bring a touch of the wild into the bedroom. Team Habitat have infused their signature flamboyance into a room that they're calling the Lion's Den. Rawr. Team Habitat set out to design a master bedroom that would roar with an eclectic mix of textures, patterns and materials and be fit for African royalty. I always say, how can someone not want to live in this bedroom? I mean... No, it's to die for. Oh. It's, to die. it's a dream. It's a dream. For us, it's a dream. We, I would love it. 
A very good afternoon to you and welcome to the Lion's Den. My name is Danilo Aquisto and my guests on the show today, Brad and Nabia from Team Habitat. Welcome to the show, you two. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> it literally feels like I'm on the set of a talk show. Absolutely. You are hosting live from the bedroom. <laughs> a bedroom with a roar. <laughs> So this is the Lion's Den. You guys have created something amazing. It feels luxurious. There's lots of elements to it. Talk us through them. Sure. Well, I'll start with the lighting. We've got three chandeliers to just bring in some real lighting. The two at the back by the bed have dimmers so you can set the tone, the mood, all of that jazz. And we wanted it quite a presidential feel. Mm. Um, high end. Absolutely. You know, with the pillars on the on the side of the bed, the wallpaper, the Caesar stone bed cladding. Like we were going for days of our lives in terms of that silky, it's like Brooke's bedroom. <laughs> it's very silky, sexy, and it's like if you got a man in there, he ain't never gonna leave. <laughs> right, so the judges often give you guys feedback about uh, sort of how extravagant you tended to go with your, with your rooms. I mean, uh, this one looks quite busy still. Well, for us, we feel like it's quite Demure. Yes, we've reeled ourselves in quite a lot and left out a lot of objects out. Yeah. And more statement pieces that with a luxe feel. We wanted an expensive, luxurious master bedroom. Well, when you talk about luxury, often it's about the detail. And I've spotted with all these big ideas that you've had, a couple of details are missing. Like, what happened to that gold thing over there? That chip paint and the not meeting the bottom of the wall there? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening there? <laughs> A lot. The thing is, we added this, obviously, at what? The 10th hour. The 10th hour. Not even the 11th <laughs> hour, <laughs> the 12th hour. <laughs> so it still could do with like a, a varnish and a little tweaks here and there. But for me, it's like it, putting such an element in the bedroom, the judges should, I don't know, love that. And yes, they can nitpick, but it's, you know, we can nitpick after with our contractors and make them retouch. The space is very unique, which means you guys have chosen a lot of bespoke items to put in here. So talk us through some of your favorites. Well, the chair that you're sitting on is a second-hand chair. So we've upcycled those, got them re-sprayed, re-upholstered. The bedding which we had made with ladies from City of Joburg, uh, the curtains as well. So that has a nice, woman's touch to the bedroom, a mother's touch. Let's have a quick moment for your paint technique that you got on the walls. It's quite different to the rest of the room. Uh, what was the, the thought plan? Yeah, we did come up with the patterns ourselves. Uh, we used different shades of Plascon. We used cashmere and double velvet. So the one has a sheen, the other one has a matte. We tried to play with that, textures. What we were going for was using the triangles to try and make the room look bigger. It's got an African element. Absolutely. Yeah. When we started, we wanted to go in Debele, but I know as soon as the judges hear in Debele from us, they would think wall to wall. Yeah. So it was quite a demure take on an African print. Yeah. And it works out quite well because it's kind of looking like sunshine that's coming from behind the trees, which I think worked quite well. It does indeed. So well done to both of you. The space is looking amazing. Thanks for joining me on the show today, you two. Thank you thank for hosting you. your show on our master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to you at home too. Hashtag win a home, let us know your thoughts. Coming up next on the show, the judges come to decide. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon, designed for life. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. It's good to have you back with us on Winner Home on Afternoon Express, exclusively on SABC3. Last week we had a conversation about what it takes to go and buy a property to rent out and what are the pros and cons of that. And if you missed the episode, go and check it out on the private property website, privateproperty.co.za. And they've partnered with us at Winner Home on Afternoon Express to provide you with advice on the different aspects of property on estates. Now, after seeing some of the amazing estates on the show, I'm pretty sure that many of you would be interested in renting a property on an estate. So today we're once again with Michelle Dickens, Managing Director of TPN Credit Bureau, uh, back in the loft with us today to chat about what it takes to, and what you should expect rather, when it comes to renting out a property on an estate. Michelle, welcome back. Afternoon, Dad. So last week we spoke about what it takes to buy and then rent those out. Let's focus on, on, on the, is it the lessee? 
the tenant the side. The tenant side of things, because it's it's something that we're not really sure of what our rights and responsibilities are, because the market is really slim and we're always looking for places to get. We don't want to limit our opportunities. I mean, what are the rights and responsibilities then of a tenant who's looking to rent on an estate? So the tenant obviously wants, um, from an estate perspective, um, the lifestyle. Uh -huh. the security, the amenities, access um, to all the fun stuff that the estate has to offer, but not having to pay the premium price um, that the buyer is going to pay. Also, um, the tenant's not going to be in for things like the levies. Mm -hmm. um, and as we know, estate levies can be quite pricey as well. So it's about having the fun of the estate without having um, all the additional costs associated. Okay. But do I, however, have the same rights and responsibilities as an owner on that estate has? So do I abide by the same rules? Can I use all the amenities like everyone else would? Absolutely. You have access to all the use um, of the estate. Um, you're going to have your gate access control. Uh, you're going to have access to the uh, facilities uh, like the golf course, uh, running tracks, the cycling tracks in some of them, the equestrian uh, side. Um, and you're going to have to buy by exactly the same rules. And in, in fact, most landlords would request that you sign those body corporate rules or homeowners rules as part of your lease agreement. Okay. Quite important because if you don't abide by the rules, then they're going to be looking for you for the fines that are going to follow. Mm -hmm. Let's ask the hard questions because I think this is something that I'm fascinated by. I mean, uh, if I choose to rent a property, I want to know what happens, what, what are the owner's rights over me? So if I choose not to pay my rent or perhaps I, I break one of the rules of the estate, um, what, what am I liable for? Tenant landlord disputes, such a fun topic. Yes. So um, tenants are liable to pay the rent in accordance with the lease agreement. Mm -hmm. Now, generally in an estate um, of lease of this nature, you're going to have a written lease agreement that determines the amount of rent that's going to be paid and the day that it needs to be paid. And the tenant needs to ensure that he complies with that part of the, the lease agreement. The um, body corporate rules or homeowner association rules are going to be part of the lease agreement. So he's going to know what he can and can't do, speeding as an example. And if there's a fine attached to that um, rental statement, on a monthly basis, he's going to need to pay that. Um, the landlord has a right to collect the rent in terms of the lease agreement. Now, if the tenant doesn't pay because, for example, he feels the property is not being maintained mm -hmm. or he doesn't feel that he was speeding and therefore he's not going to pay the speeding fine, um, there are places that tenants and landlords go to mediate the dispute without just simply withholding rent mm -hmm. in terms of I'm not paying my rent because it's not being maintained. Really, the right of the tenant is to go to somewhere like the Rental Housing Tribunal and get the, um, the dispute mediated. Okay. In terms of the landlords for non-payment of rent, um, the Rental Housing Tribunal is not the place we go. There we go directly to the marriage or the High Court in terms of how do I ensure my tenant um, um, pays up. Okay, so I may not just uh, remove amenities and like cut off the water or if the person's not paid for a couple of months? No, some fun stuff that we've had High Court rulings are where landlords have um, denied access into the estate through the access control. That would be spoliation. No, you can't do that. Okay. Um, it is a criminal offence to disconnect the utilities, the water, the lights, the mm. electricity, um, lock out the tenant. You may not take the law into your own hands. Absolutely. So you're, you're responsible to abide by the law but let the courts and the law take action and not, not yourself as a private individual. Correct. Fascinating. So it makes sense to rent on an estate if you're looking for all the lifestyle amenities to look after your safety, your family, if it's close to all the amenities you're looking for. And so renting itself is always a good way to go if you cannot afford to buy at this stage. Well, it's not always if you cannot afford to buy. Um, okay. some, some people look at renting to say, well, I can get into a rental accommodation, um, but I'm going to take the difference of what I would be paying for home ownership versus what I'm renting and put that into some sort of savings or investment where I can then at a later date um, get into That's this it. home ownership in, in, a, in any state that I desire. Sure, lovely. So it is really good, but do all your research. Michelle, Absolutely. thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to join us. Thanks, Dan. All right, so there you guys have it. You could be enjoying the estate lifestyle as a renter, but should always be aware of the pros and the cons before signing any lease agreement. So don't forget to enter the Winner Home competition on private property to stand a chance of winning a multi-million rand home on the Eye of Africa estate. No need to rent. It's your choice of one of the three being decorated by our design duos. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za and answer an easy question and vote for your favorite design duo. It's as simple as that. Now after the break on the show, the judges finally arrived to decide which of the master bedrooms tick all the right boxes. Don't go anywhere.
welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express on this glorious Friday afternoon. Now you've seen the design duo's amazing work here on the show. Now for a chance to see the homes in person. The Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate is hosting a Heritage Day Festival on Sunday the 24th of September. There'll be food and craft stalls and plenty to enjoy for the whole family. Plus our three Winner Home units will be open to view. So come and experience the largest prize on South African television for yourself and meet the wonderful design duo. I know they're excited too. So go to iveafrica.co.za for ticket information. Right, so these design duos may have completed their master bedrooms on time, but I'm telling you they will not be able to rest until those judges give their critique. Contestants, your fourth room challenge required a mastery of your design flair. The judges are here and they'll decide which team will sleep easy tonight and which will have nightmares. They are Katlejo Konlo from Plascon, Donald Ngumalo, and David Muirhead, the renowned designer. My name is David Muirhead. I'm an interior designer in Johannesburg. I enjoy an eclectic mix of design. The key to my design really is capturing the essence of the individual. It's interpreting an individual. It's not always about interpreting your own style. It's more about listening, capturing the essence of the client and the needs of the client and expressing that. What an honor it is. It's always an honor to be judged by someone who's been doing what you are trying to do. And That's doing it. great things. Absolutely. You know. All the guest judges are just amazing. But when it comes to David, he's traveled very well, so I'm quite scared because if he's seen it all. I'm so excited, simply because he's like one of those designers that like gave me a chance when I was still in varsity. When we had to find like internships, I was like that overambitious one. I wanted to work for like a top billing interior designer. So I made a short list and I con tried contacting all designers. So David Muirhead got back to me. That was like so exciting. So every time I see him, I become so excited. The first master bedroom visited by the judges belongs to Team VC. Can they impress these discerning design connoisseurs with their modern African style? The most thing that I think the judges are gonna love about our room is the use of color. David is gonna love our closet and the server. Uh, Katleho must love our mirror. And, and the bed. And Donald is gonna love the curtains and the color of that bent orange and also the rug and the four poster bed. I love the fact that they've taken the color all the way down from the actual skirting all the way up to the ceiling, which brings it all beautifully together. I think the colour really captures the essence of this room. This wonderful African colour, the, the sunset colour, you know, in the, in the accent cushions and the curtaining. The wallpaper is beautiful, but possibly a little bit contrasting to the accent detail of the pedestals. However, the whole room has got a wonderful essence of, of Africa and a beautiful contrasting texture. You know what I love? I love that this bed is so big and it's so present, but it doesn't feel domineering. And also the colour. I just think that it looks so natural and adds a sense of um, nature into the space. And Donald, that mirror, recipe for babies. <laughs> My first impression is brilliant. There is functionality, there's practicality, there's a harmony about the room. My favourite aspect of this room is really the sense of proportions. The bed is quite present and beautiful, and so are the pedestals on each side. I love that the Ndebele print comes out in such an unconventional way on furniture, as well as how the Caesar stone is used as a tabletop on the pieces of furniture. There are elements of design that I would not have thought of, but what I'm appreciating more about it now is how it links to that gorgeous bathroom that they did. So it makes a lot of sense. There's a co cohesive feel to it. And more importantly, it's livable. I possibly think that we could have played with a darker color on the walls to highlight this incredible pattern on the wallpaper. And it may have given the room a completely winning formula. I'm rather disappointed with the execution with the curtains. I feel it it just lets the room down. The top of the curtains, it just wasn't sitting properly at the top there. It looks a bit flimsy and sort of cheapens the look, but overall, because it's a, it's a velvet fabric, it still looks 
glamorous, but just how it's hung is really quite a let down for me. Team House and Leisure knows all about curtains spoiling a room, so they're hoping the judges appreciate the touches of luxury in their master bedroom. I think the judges are liking the full carpet in the room because I think we're the only team that use carpet and the lights from the top which look like candles during the day, I think that adds a bit of a mood to the room. And our proper selection of curtains this time around could be filled <laughs> with the guest bedroom. I think they've redeemed themselves from last week, don't you think? There's a wonderful mood here, there's mm. a wonderful mood, there's an ambience. Yeah. I absolutely love how soothing this space is. It just it feels like it hugs you and it just gives you a sense of, of just calmness and peace. I'm still not sure about the toilet being so exposed though. The wonderful concept here between the division of the division of the planting mm. is so superb. Mm. However, I agree with you, if we had maybe made the plants a little higher and possibly put the, the WC in an enclosure, it would probably be a little more private. So overall, it's Wonderfully beautiful, it's great ambiance, mm. but certain practical aspects mm. maybe need um, a bit of finishing. I just love that there's a desk here and that you can also look at yourself. But I just, the only thing I wouldn't do is have a colored mirror mm. because although it's a beautiful effect, it's not very practical mm. when you're putting on your makeup or looking at yourself. So you look darker? You look darker. Mm, no. Well, fine for some people actually. <laughs> <laughs> Walking to this room, Team House and Leisure, I'm immediately transported to a place of just happiness. I think it's, it's an exquisite room. Wow, what a wonderful mood. There's something very special about the mood, the coloration plays a huge role, and that is the first impression. So I would give that 100%. My favorite aspect is the indulgent flooring, that indulgent comfort. You, you walk in, it feels like it just swallows you whole. The wall colour is exquisite, the curtains are beautiful, the bed just feels like one big cloud that you just want to jump in and go to sleep. I'm glad that they made the decision to transition from that meadow yellow that they used into the oyster catcher because it really just creates that softness that you need in a master bedroom. My least favourite aspect of the room is that the WC is not enclosed in that space. I have checked out of hotels before when I found out that the WC opens to the bedroom. So it's a very controversial design element. As much as we would like to create really beautiful, exquisite interiors, we have to look at the practical side of things because ultimately somebody has to live there. This room is missing a bit of privacy in terms of the pedestals. You need somewhere to put your box of tissues, you need some, some drawer spaces just to hide those things that are unsightly and that you don't want to see. And with that, the judges head to Team Habitat's master bedroom, complete with Caesar stone pillars, chandeliers, and touches of gold. We just hope that they, they fall in love with the energy the room gives you. And the daringness of each element, like from the bed to the Caesar stone to how we played with the plascon. Mm. I mean, we literally kept it quite demure, but we played with every element in that room. Yeah, demure, but... Strike it with a dazzle yes. and a razzle. Versace on the dance floor. Gosh, it really is a room of courage. And, and, and what I love about it is we, we, we live in a world of such neutrality, so color by number. And this really brings courage to the essence of the room. There's so many wonderful elements coming through here of an international exposure. It may not be our aesthetic as South Africans, but it definitely conjures up an international expression. What I love most about the room, and this could have been actually developed further, is the coloration on the walls and the pattern, which is a very clever way of interpreting and bringing in a new pattern without actually using a wallpaper. No, I agree with you. I, I believe in what they believe in. They're unapologetic about who they are and the execution says that all. However, I do feel that the touches, the finishing touches let them down. The quality, for example, the, the fabric on the curtains and the scatter cushions, I feel they could have paid more attention to that. It's full of character. It's got a lot of personality. It's not a Pinterest room. Main bedroom should feel regal and special and should be the most important room in the home. And I think this room feels like that. The application is just doesn't feel that way. I think the only person that will be happy in this room is Liberace and he's dead. Whoa. And Versace. 
and he's dead too. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Don't know. Team Habitat, you have not disappointed. You've stayed true to who you are. And I'm proud to see that there is an element of editing. I mean, if I have a look at where we started with the spare bedroom and where we are now with the master bedroom, I'm quite inspired by them. I enjoy the essence and the strength and courage of that room. And I feel in a world where everything is so neutral and people are so fearful to be courageous, I admire the courage and I think there's a great future for that design team. My favorite aspect of this room is definitely that wallpaper. I think it creates an interesting focal point and also quite unusual for a main bedroom because usually main bedrooms would be tranquil, but this is really um, quite engaging to the senses. What I don't like in this room is that the size of the bed is just so majestic and the pedestals are so small. I think that doesn't work and I think we need to really improve. We need storage at the side of a bed. My least favorite aspect of this room is that the WC is still open to the bedroom, which has a practical um, problem within a sleeping space. In any room, we need bedside lamps so that we are able to read. I think the chandeliers are really beautiful. However, I think they're a bit too high and therefore reading in the evening could be a bit of a problem. This room is a Versace escape. It's frivolous, it's fun, and it definitely has a place. Wow, trust our judges to provide such honest and interesting feedback. Now, with equal amounts of positive feedback as well as that constructive criticism of the three very different master bedrooms, it's anyone's guess which design duo will be declared the winners. Share your predictions now using hashtag WinAHome. Design contestants, welcome back. Who will be the master of the master bedroom? The challenge is tight. Let's start with you, Team House and Leisure. The judges felt like they had walked into a dream and just wanted to melt away in that bed of yours. But the more time they spent inside your room, the more they became uncomfortable with the space. And once again, the privacy issue came up. Team VC, the judges loved your creative use of color. They loved the practicality of the space and they loved the flow from the master bathroom all the way into the master bedroom. However, the execution of your curtains let you down. In our previous critiques and stuff, like we're trying to learn, like getting the balance and stuff, we think with this critique, it's about making things more perfect. So right now, we know what the judges expect and we know how the challenges work. It's about polishing everything from now on. No more mistakes. Team Habitat. My favorite line was that the judges thought that you would have made Versace proud. They love the international feel, and the courageous design that you used. However, with all of your extravagant designs, your detail and execution is what let you down. I feel like our critique is fair, like in terms of that gold was an 11th hour, last minute thing, mm. so it can be, you know, touched up. Yeah. There can only be one winner, however, and I want to tell you that the judges had a very tough decision to make this time round. It was almost a tie. There can, however, only be one winner. And the winner of the Master Bedroom Challenge is... Team VC, congratulations. Yeah. Uh -oh. I'm just cool with it. I've been waiting for the win from Challenge 1. <laughs> Okay. Very excited for them. We are excited and sad at the same time that we didn't win. Don't look so excited. <laughs> I am excited. I just don't look excited. <laughs> it's only right that maybe now we've all had a chance to take the crown home. Mm. But it must be known. It must be known from the get-go that that crown belongs here with Team Habitat. Nice to give them a taste. Yes, yes. just a taste. Yes. But they mustn't get too attached to that crown. I think it will be a bit heavy for them. <laughs> <laughs> there are interesting times ahead as the playing field is now leveled among the design duos. Next week, they'll have to cook up some amazing ideas to design a space with all the right flavors to impress the judges. So do tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. on Afternoon Express to get a taste of the next design challenge. For me, Danilo Christa, have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.
Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.